So K approval voting, where voters just vote for uh, K public projects they want to see funded uh, without thinking about the project costs, uh, that's certainly simple. It's a natural thing to try. It works well with paper ballots. Um, but we saw that, you know, it may not lead to desirable outcomes. Basically, voters are not forced to reckon with the project costs, and as such, they tend to uh, overrepresent expensive projects. So expensive projects basically get uh, unduly boosted um, by K approval voting. So the question is, is there something else we could do? And so I want to show you about kind of a cutting edge alternative that's been you know, deployed a little bit uh, and hopefully will be deployed more in the years to come, uh, something known as knapsack voting. And if you want to read more, I'll tell you about it now, but if you want to read more about it, um, then there's some nice work being done uh, at Stanford. You can go to the pbstanford.org uh, URL to find out more. So knapsack voting, to be honest, it looks a lot like what we just did with K-approval voting, but with one big difference. Where with K-approval voting, you, were, the, you know, the constraint was that you could only give a thumbs up to up to K projects. And again, it didn't depend on what the project's costs were, expensive, not expensive, whatever, you were allowed up to K. In knapsack voting, you can have thumbs up on any number of projects you want, as long as the sum of those project costs is at most the budget. So in effect, a voter is proposing a way of spending the budget, a subset of projects to spend the budget on, subject to feasibility, subject to those projects really not being more than the budget. And if you think about it, this now forces voters to consider project costs, right? So like in a running example, um, a voter is going to notice that, you know, if they vote for project one, they don't get to vote for anything else. Whereas if they vote for project two, then they also get to vote for project three in addition, because the sum of those costs, you might recall, was a half a million each. So two and three together would fit under the, the budget of $1 million in the example on the previous slide. So that's the idea. Okay, so you don't have to have this hard constraint of K thumbs up. It's a constraint where the thumbs up sh should have the total cost at most the overall budget. So once you have everybody's votes, now you just proceed exactly as you did before with K approval voting. So you're going to sort the projects from most popular to least popular. So the projects with the largest number of votes from people, you know, the projects with the least number, you're just going to walk down the projects one by one, uh, funding them until the funding runs out. And again, there's going to be some project where you're only going to be funding it partially because your budget will run out in the middle of it. And we're going to assume that that makes sense. For example, that you're only going to renovate uh, half of the roads of a neighborhood rather than all of the roads of a neighborhood. So returning to the example, where again we had a budget of $1 million and the project costs were a $1 million for project one and a half a million for each of two and three. Um, let's think again about as if the first project would generate value four per voter, the second project three per voter, the third project two per voter. So now, you know, with one approval voting, we we're sort of thinking voters might be tempted to just vote for project number one. They only got to vote for one, and so they may as well vote for the one project that gives them the most value. But if you're doing knapsack voting, right, so again, now they sort of realize they really have two options. They can either vote for one or they can vote for projects two and three. And those are mutually exclusive and those are the two natural options. And so if a voter realizes that and they say, hey, you know, if I vote for projects two and three, I'm going to get a value of five. Whereas if I voted for project one, I'd only get a value of four. Then you would expect that voters who realize this would vote for projects number two and three. And then uh, as long as enough voters vote in that way, then at the end of the day, indeed, projects two and three are going to be the ones uh, that get funded. And that's what we want to see happen. That would be the Pareto optimal outcome where you, the budget is spent in the way that maximizes the total value uh, for everybody. One thing I want to point out is that knapsack voting, unlike K-approval voting, this would be challenging to implement as a paper ballot, right? Because that would force the voters to sort of keep track themselves of whether or not sort of the sum of the project costs of the, of the projects they selected is at most the budget or not. So if someone votes for something which goes over budget, what do you do? Do you throw out their vote? Do you sort of, you know, use the first of the projects that they picked up to the budget? What do you do? So whereas if you're voting by computer, right, then it's sort of very clear, right? It can just prevent you from casting the vote uh, if you're over budget. It can show you how much budget is remaining uh, and allow you to sort of experiment with, you know, toggling projects on or off, experiment with different possibilities. It's just much easier to imagine knapsack voting working uh, with a computerized voting interface compared to with paper ballots. So here again is some place where we're seeing you know, technology, technological advances are really enabling types of voting, which probably would have been too comp complicated to contemplate in the past. 
So this, this example is um, reassuring. It gives us some intuition about why uh, knapsack voting might be superior uh, to the simpler K-approval voting. Uh, so it's more complicated, but not that bad with the computer interface. Uh, and because it sort of really forces voters to stand in the shoes of the decision makers, it forces the voters to uh, respect the exact same budget that the eventual decision makers are going to have to respect. Um, they're going to be internalizing the project costs uh, in a more basic way, and that should lead to uh, better decisions, decisions that more reflect people's preferences uh, under the constraints. But, uh, you know, this is just like a three project example. So you shouldn't take this that seriously. It's just kind of getting us started on a certain track. Uh, so you should ask the question, you know, can we say something more convincing uh, about knapsack voting being a good idea? And so again, this is pretty cutting edge stuff. So uh, researchers are still in the process of understanding uh, the properties around knapsack voting. But I want to tell you a little bit about those properties next.